so just as a rule of thumb uh, for everybody, uh, as far as tuning is concerned, because I, I know what goes through people's minds is what is this worth from a, a percentage standpoint. Uh, tuning is there typically to offset what can on average be about a 2% degradation in efficiency over the course of a year. Uh, in linkageless systems, typically you know, 4 or 5% would not be an unreasonable number. You know, the real answer is it depends because a lot of things factor into those percentages. Uh, but even with those kinds of numbers, the, typically the ROI will pay for, you know, is such that the stuff pays for itself in very short order. Right. And some of the less expensive burners that don't have characterizable trim are even better candidates. They were purchased for low first cost, but unfortunately to really set them up properly is a very painstaking process because it's all done mechanically through ratios of radius and ball joints and crank arms, and it's just terrible. So those, those actually prove to be even better. Continuing on with our energy saving tips, if we look at the overfire draft, which is the pressure in the region where the, the burner is firing, that has to generally be maintained fairly uniformly and, and no more than needed. Uh, small draft changes can influence fuel consumption in, in a large way. And obviously when we think about uh, the generation of carbon monoxide or soot, we think about how that might impede the heat transfer between our flame and our process. So going back to the boiler example, if we have as little as a 32nd of an inch of soot on the tubes, and that's fairly uniform, we'll see about a 2% increase required to hit the, uh, the boiler's output. Uh, it's much like wearing a, a very small windbreaker on a cold day. It doesn't take a whole lot of insulation to, to change the amount of heat transferred in the process. With an eighth of an inch, uh, costing up to an 8% change. So that, that's pretty incredible. That's, yeah, it's it. not much. Really and it really does affect it. So we want to make sure that the, the fire side and the water side surfaces are clean. We might have a clean fire side, there might be a chemical issue or some other process related issue which impedes the heat transfer. Be careful to look for that as well. Okay, and uh, lastly to talk a little bit about safety. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, as an owner of the equipment or as you interview the person who owns the equipment, uh, some pending signs of trouble to look for. Is, is your boiler cycling a lot? Is your burner cycling a lot? And by that, you might have something related back to your burner management system, combustion airflow switch, a dirty blower wheel. These kinds of things can lead to a change in the personality of the equipment. You want to be cognizant of that. Hard starts or delayed ignition, some call it audible ignition where we have a fuel air mixture in the chamber, but it takes a moment to get it lit. Unfortunately, that volume of fuel and air on ratio can have an explosive result when it lights. Uh, I'd heard some time ago that 27 cubic feet of gas and air on ratio, which is only, what, 2.7 cubic feet right. of gas, balances air is equivalent to about a stick of dynamite. So wow. it doesn't take much to have an issue there. And then frequent flame safeguard resets where You've got a uh, burner management system trying to tell you that something's awry. You're, you're down there resetting for often, or way, way more often than, than you had maybe in the past. So these are all signs of something happening you should be uh, more interested in looking through. And, and as we had, had said at one time before, they, they kind of happen a little bit over time. They don't no, just all, all of a right. sudden you wake up one day and these things are going on. Right. right. Generally, this is going to be a trend that you want to be careful of. Periodic safety tests, of course, the emissions portion of this is of interest to us. Carbon monoxide production is, is key to minimize. And then I, uh, this has always been kind of my uh, soapbox here, is to encourage frequent dynamic safety tests of your burner management system, only because things, unfortunately, get bypassed and defeated. And I really am an advocate of people going through that equipment on a regular basis and making sure that every one of those safety instruments are set appropriately and that they are there to take action when needed. So uh, that's a safety-related thing that isn't necessarily combustion-related, but I thought I'd add that comment. Okay. And so then uh, as we wind down then, um, just show folks a, a shot of, of the website. Uh, this, as you can tell, is going to combustion controls, which we're really happy is number one on the list. So that's yeah, always that's a neat thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, there are products, RM7800s, the burner management systems, uh, the purple peepers, uh, and, you know, various uh, information available as we look at how the items are sorted by product type, if you will. So, you know, we talked about linkage list control systems. We talked about uh, burner management systems. 
Uh, our intent in this webinar was not to hit you over the head with the fact that you can come buy that stuff from us, but that's where it is. And uh, we hope that we've provided some value to you that would make you consider us as a supplier for this. Uh, I would put a point in, um, if you have uh, burner management systems that you need checked, a majority of our local offices will do that, number one, and caution very much against buying remanufactured uh, burner management systems because it's just not a good it's thing to do. Okay. Uh, as you go further down on that same page, uh, lots of reference materials. You know, as John had, had mentioned, um, our website is kind of a source book or a mm -hmm. source location. Uh, certainly lots of materials in terms of product and, and links to white papers. Uh, again, we encourage you just go there and putz around. Uh, yeah, so there's just a lot of good stuff, and you can just spend some time there. So that's it from our end. Uh, Jen, would you like to take it from here? Yeah, thank you, Ron and John. Um, I'd like to read some of the questions that came through the chat. Uh, one question being from Tom. He asks, does the fuel have to have to be carbon-based? Yes. The, the free carbon is what's combining with the oxygen for heat release. Uh, and that might vary quite a bit in fuel, like oil. Fuel oils, for example, uh, have a varying carbon content. If you're a large consumer of fuel oil, every time you get a new tank or a shipment, you might retune the burner, only because the characteristics vary. But ultimately, yes, we need carbon in the fuel source to burn. OK, thank you. Uh, we received another question in from Jim, and he asks, how does a candle work? Okay, well, that's, <laughs> that's a good one. Well, if you think the older you get, yeah, <laughs> the better they <laughs> work. Yeah, oh, a, well, uh, candle wax, obviously, is a solid fuel. And when the candle is made, the wick is, uh, is part of the candle. The wax is poured around it. The wax permeates the wick. If you look at any candle that had been burned at some time with it off, obviously, you'll see that the wax is, through uh, capillarity, gone up the wick itself. When we apply our heat source, going back to our combustion triangle, we're actually heating the wax that's uh, permeating the wick to the point where it vaporizes, and we're really burning that as a gas. So what will happen is we don't consume the wick until we've consumed enough wax that the level on the wick has dropped. And to prove this, what you can do, and this you can be the life of the party here, is, is take a lit match and, and keep it nearby the candle. Blow the candle out, but put the match above the wick. As the smoke rises, and really what that is is volatilized fuel, the flame will propagate down that little smoke trail and, and end up back on the wick. So you're really burning wax in a vaporized form. It's a good question. Okay. So, uh, Jen, I've got, a, I've got a question for John, if I might. Okay. Uh, sure. After sitting through the, the better part of an hour and, and uh, listening to what we have to say about combustion, if you could give a piece of advice, John, to folks in terms of, boy, I would strongly encourage you to go do this one thing for for your appliance, what would that be? Okay. What would you encourage people to do? Well, uh, being that our world is, is a lot of the engineering of the safety equipment and the combustion equipment for large combustion applications, I find a lot of burner management equipment really lacking. If I had the chance to say anything, I would say have your periodic safety tests done on a regular basis. The second thing to that, of course, would be maintaining the efficiency side. We address safety first. Now we look at the efficiency of it. And I would look very critically at how the burner is set up. I would consider some elements of heat recovery based on the exhaust gas process uh, temperatures and, and availability and, and run time and economics and such. But I would always address the safety first and the efficiency second, and uh, that would be my priority if I were a building owner or equipment owner. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, um, for those of you um, out in the audience who want to know more about the linkageless systems, we do have uh, a previous webinar that we did posted uh, on, on the website. You, you can, can go check it out and, 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 and listen it to it and, and learn some more about that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I thank you all for your time. And hopefully you find this beneficial, at least as you consider the equipment in your facility. Um, and, and likewise, and, and I think it's it really is attending these kinds of things and, and going through this really is an investment in ourselves. Right. Uh, it just makes us better as uh, professionals, and um, it brings some value to our customers. Sure. Jen, I think we're finished on our end. What would you like to say to wrap us up? Okay. Um, 
So basically, if any of you missed any part of today's presentation, we're going to post a recorded version on our website, which is industrialcontrolsonline.com. And within the next couple of days, we're going to email a link to the video and our contact information if you have any further questions or feedback uh, for our future webinars. And I think you wanted to add one last thing? Yeah, and the other thing that uh, John and I uh, talked about as we were, as we were doing this, actually, uh, is uh, since we have folks' email address, we will email you the questions uh, and the answers, both the ones that we covered here live and any other questions that might have come in that we didn't get a chance to answer on the air. Sure. Uh, we'll go ahead and answer those and, and send that back to everybody. So if you see an email coming with a subject line that looks strangely familiar like fundamentals of combustion, uh, we'd ask you not to send it to your spam folder, uh, but have a look. Uh, John and I also are going to do some uh, kind of rummaging through our, our research materials. And there are a couple of really important documents and white papers that we think could be of value to you. We'll attach those to that email as well. So uh, our commitment to you is that when you get that from us, uh, it, will be, it will be good stuff. And it will be things that, that we, you'd want to read and will help you in your business. Sure. And from a selfish standpoint, if there's anything that you'd suggest that we might have covered differently or better or other topics for future seminars, uh, right. please feel free to let us know. It's, it's a real good format for communication. So we have our names and uh, contact information uh, up on the screen. Uh, trust me, there are lots of folks inside of industrial controls who know this subject matter very well. Uh, some of them may be more local to you, certainly, than we are. Uh, but if you have questions, we invite you to send them to us or, or give us a call. We'll take care of them, or we'll get you to the right person, one or the other. Thank you. OK, I think they're tired of listening to us now, Jen. We can stop. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, guys. Thank we you. We look forward to having you all back.